So let's talk about what a helicopter cost and the operating cost of a helicopter and just a, you know just a few little minor things about you know what I do to do a pre-flight on a helicopter. So let's get right into it. First things first, we kick the power on. Watch that light, your carbon dioxide light comes on first and then I'll go back. I've got a, a, a checklist. I'm not going to go through the checklist today because it's that'd be too long. But what I want to just show you is kind of how I do a pre-flight. All right, so here's the check lights. So I, I'm just going through all my uh, warning lights in there. So essentially what this does is it grounds the, um, there's a sensor in each one of these gear boxes. So if you have any metal floating around in there, it'll make a ground and it'll send a signal to me as I'm flying. So I know that, um, you know, I got a problem. I'm losing some uh, metal in my gearbox and maybe there's some, there's a problem there. So, and that all the way down to an engine fire. So why these things are back here and not in there, I don't know. It's a Robinson thing. That's why we got to turn the power on and check it there. So at the same time, I'm on the, while I've got the power on, I'm checking my fuel. I'm full of fuel. Good there. So now I can turn the power off here and we'll start sumping some gas. So here's, here's how I sump the gas. This one being a new helicopter, they actually give you a little glass of sump. And the way I do it is I start at the top and work my way down. So the top is the, the main tank on the other side. I'll do a sump on it. So the reason that we're sumping the tank is we're looking for any debris or water or contaminants in the fuel. So you can see it, see it going in there. See it in there like that. And then and, and each time, so I did the main tank, I just did the aux tank. I'll hold it up to the light, looking for any debris floating down. Water's gonna be sitting there. And then I'll finish up down here with the, with the gas collector. And then we'll check it. Make sure, you know, you wanna make sure it's the right color. Uh, there's nothing in there. No debris. Okay. So now at this point here, what I'm gonna do is just take you through, instead of going through every, every little piece, I'm gonna take you what I really worry about. One thing I see a lot of Robinsons is they open this back door and they lift the seat up and they smash the, the seat frame out when they're going up there. So I always just keep a ladder around. Go up here, step right here. And then my next spot is, is gonna be my knee right here. And then I'm up here and I'm checking up here. All right, so when I'm up here, these push rods, I'm checking, make sure I don't have too much slack in here. And at the same time, I'm checking to make sure there's a nut and a head on each side of these bolts. I've seen them come in where the head's missing. So you wanna make sure they're all, everything is there and intact. Make sure I don't have oil leaking here. You know, no slack, everything feels pretty good. Make sure if somebody else is flying a helicopter that they didn't, you know, didn't uh, do a little mass bumping. When, you, when I say nuts and bolts, I mean the head and the nut has to be there. I've seen helicopters, I mean, literally missing part of the, part of the bolt. So you gotta just, you know, come up here, check all this. And while I'm up here, it's a good time to look at the bottom of the blade See if you got a dent in the bottom of the blade because it'll really show up at this point. So if you hit something, a bird or a, lay, uh, you know, a tree branch or any kind of trash, it's, the dent is going to be on the bottom side of the blade. Okay, so now we're back in here on the gearbox, back in here. So what I'm doing here is I'm checking. I've got temp tapes, so see the little orange thing? There you go. That deal there. Okay, so that, that tells me if, it's getting, if the temperature is getting too hot in there. There's another one above it, and I also have a sight glass for my oil. I'm checking that. I'm checking this sight glass for my hydraulics. Also, this is my push rod for my, for my tail rotor. So I'm checking it, the movement on it, making sure that it's free and clear. This is your main drive shaft right here, okay? So I'm always looking right about there. Make sure there's not any metal fragments or something or spiral crack. If, uh, if, if a mechanic or something hit it too hard and there's a crack, crack in there, it, it'll break. 
Then I come up here to my flex coupling. See my flex coupling? I make sure there's no cracks on it. And I know it's hard to get around and feel it all, but if you can put your hand in there and just run your finger, just inside the, just inside there, if it's broke, you'll feel it with your finger. That's a couple things. If those things break, what's gonna happen is, is your engine RPMs are gonna go out the roof, but your rotor RPMs gonna, are gonna fall. So it's gonna be real confusing to you because you can go, whoa, what the hell's going on? Because your engine's over, over speeding and your rotor speed and you're losing your rotor, your rotor blade RPM. So it's gonna be confusing. So you need to be really careful of those. And, and the way, a lot of the stuff that I learn to look for is I look at accident reports and I see accident reports and they say what happened and that's kind of what I go off of. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here to my engine on, on this side. I'm checking my air filter. Of course, your air filter's there. Okay, I'm coming in here checking this metal, uh, all this metal metal cracks real bad. If it's broke, let's, it's, this is an air-cooled engine, so it's, in, it's important that you have that sh uh, your shroud on there. Checking my exhaust, my throttle um, cable. Start closing this up. Check the fuel cap, make sure it's lined up. Now back here, this is where you're, uh, you need to be checking these belts. Essentially how, how, the, how it works is you start the engine up, the engine starts running, and as soon as you do, you engage the clutch. This is the clutch. What the clutch is, this is the clutch right here. <clears throat> and actually all the clutch does is it, is it runs a gear, a worm gear, and it tightens your belts up. So that's, I mean, it's essentially, you know, these people say you're just twisting the rubber band. That's what it's doing. It's just getting the belts tight. So see the belts are loose right now. Once you engage that clutch, it takes a couple, about a minute, and then it'll, it'll pull these belts tight. So while I'm here, I'm checking the belts, making sure there's no damage on the belts, checking my um, tail rotor pressure rods. And at the same time, remember we talk about a, spr a sprag clutch? You need a sprag clutch to be able to do a full auto rotation in a helicopter. That's where the sprag clutch is. So we'll make sure there's no leaks, no oils, and it'll be gear oil coming out and you'll see it all inside here. So that's, I'm checking that. I'm checking my frame, make sure there's no cracks. I've got another flex coupling back here. Checking that, make sure it's all good. Bolts, paint stripes on there. So this is an air-cooled engine. So this is our fan shroud. This is what pulls, so it pulls the air in here and blows it down. So at this point here, I'm just looking, make sure there's no trash or debris in here. Make sure my oil coolers are clear. Okay, coming down, we're speeding along here. So there's a little crease. Um, you know, of course I'm making sure there's no dents or uh, cracks or breaks in here, but always give it a, a little bang there in case there's a loose bolt in there. It's gonna be rattling around. Come in here. Make sure there's nothing loose here, nothing broke. Going to the back of the helicopter. So there's been accidents where these, uh, the, the uh, tail rotor gearbox actually falls off. So it's always good to just reach up there and give it a, make sure it's on there. Check your oil, push rods. Now, uh, with with the kind of flying I do, I fly out of trim a lot. That means that means I'm out of trim, which means I'm not flying straight. So it's putting pressure on my tail rotor. So the tail rotor, I'm always really careful about checking to make sure I don't have a crack on the tail rotor. So this is a new helicopter, so you know hopefully you don't have it. But you know when you fly out of trim a lot, it's you really need to check that tail rotor because you're putting a little extra pressure on the tail rotor. Pretty simple, come up here, check your exhaust, make sure it's not loose. Get underneath here, check your oil. Okay, coming out of the back of the engine, be you got a crankshaft that comes out. And that crankshaft seal is only good for maybe three or 400 hours, maybe 500. And if it starts leaking oil, it can leak down onto your that bottom pulley and get oil on your belt and that pulley, and it can give you some trouble. So that's one thing I'm always looking for. Make sure I don't have oil dripping here. But now when I check the bottom of the engine, I'm checking there. Checking the alternator belt, just making sure everything's kind of in order there. You got uh, bolts in here. You got a little sight glass. We check those bolts, make sure that uh, the bolts all good. 
check my oil. And so these Lyconians, the bottom, the bottom um, marker is, is a seven quarts. If you put seven quarts in it, it'll just puke it out. So six and a half quarts is kind of where this helicopter likes to be. Um, anything more than six and a half quarts, you might as well just pour it on the ground because it's gonna puke it out. So other than that, checking all everything looks good there. So now we just kind of we got all that checked. And at this point here, I'm just kind of doing a walk around. So I'm just kind of walking around looking at the skids, making sure there's nothing broke here, make sure the windshields are clean, walk the blades out. So this is the leading edge, and I'm just looking for any kind of little something that we might have hit, uh, or, or any kind of delamination up in here. I'll check the front of the helicopter, check the windshield, all the way down, because this is usually where you're gonna have a problem right here. I do this little, I little walk around there, even when I, as soon as I land and shut the helicopter down, I do a walk around because it's, you know, it's fresh on my mind. The helicopter's, you know, it's, just, it's still warm and hot, and I just do a walk around, and you can't walk around them enough. Um, they're not like an airplane. You just can't just kind of get in and go. I mean, airplane pilots are some of the worst pre-flighters in the world because they get in the habit of having, just jump in their airplane like a car and drive off, and they're, they're the absolute worst. A helicopter's not that forgiving. If you got a part going wrong with it, it gets festive really fast.